Playoff Jimmy is the real deal, and he single-handedly defeated the Bucks in five games, ensuring the Heat's advancement to the second round where they'll face the New York Knicks. Throughout these games, Jimmy averaged 38 points and took complete control of the series. He is a player who has consistently proven his worth in high-stakes situations such as these. Which raises the question, why has every team he has ever played for given up on him? But first, let's take a quick trip down memory lane. Born in Houston, Jimmy faced a challenging upbringing. His father left the family while he was still a baby, and he had a difficult relationship with his mother throughout his childhood. At the young age of just 13, she kicked him out of the house and left with these final words, I don't like the look of you, you gotta go. It goes without saying that Jimmy faced a tough reality early in life, but he refused to let it define him. He found temporary shelter at the homes of various friends and teammates. As he moved from one house to another throughout high school, everything changed the summer before his senior year. He met Jordan Wesley, then a freshman and now a former NFL wide receiver. The two forged a strong friendship and eventually became like family. Their bond began when Jordan invited Jimmy to stay at his house. One night turned into several, then weeks, and eventually months. Jordan's mother, Michelle Lambert, embraced Jimmy as a part of their family, which already included seven children. She offered Jimmy the loving, stable home he needed. They welcomed me into their family, and it wasn't because of basketball. She was incredibly loving. She just did things like that. It was unbelievable. Jimmy went on to play college basketball at Marquette University in the fall of 2008 and quickly made a name for himself, especially in his junior year when he averaged 16 points, made the All-Big East team for the second straight year, and soon after declared for the 2011 NBA Draft. As the last pick in the first round, the Chicago Bulls selected the 6'7 small forward, and Jimmy was finally ready to prove his worth on the brightest stage. However, in his rookie year, Butler had limited playing time. Participating in only 42 games during the shortened 2011 to 2012 season. Nonetheless, things took a positive turn in the following season when he played in all 82 games for the Bulls, initially receiving limited minutes during the 2012 to 13 season. Butler's role expanded in the later half of the season, including starting in all 12 playoff games. Jimmy showcased his incredible defensive skills against prime LeBron James. At just 23 years old, this was a clear indication that Butler had the potential to become a key player in high-stakes games. But it wasn't until his fourth season that Jimmy Butler truly began making a name for himself. His scoring average leaped from 13 to 20 points. He made the All-Star team and won the Most Improved Player Award. With Derrick Rose's career derailed by injuries, Jimmy stepped up as the Bulls' main guy. In the playoffs, he delivered 25 points and got the Bulls to the conference semifinals. It was becoming abundantly clear, provide Jimmy with good players around him, and the Bulls might have a shot at the title. However, the only ones who didn't notice were the Bulls' front office, which had been historically poor ever since MJ retired. That offseason, mediocre role players landed hefty contracts, while Jimmy only made a fraction. The following year, the Bulls said goodbye to D. Rose and Joachim Noah, setting the stage for Butler to become the team's franchise player. This was their golden opportunity to assemble a strong core around Jimmy, but instead of signing up and coming talent, they only acquired past their prime players like Dwayne Wade and Rajon Rondo. As if that wasn't enough, the team's dynamic took a nosedive. Following a defeat to the Hawks, Jimmy publicly criticized the younger players for their lack of dedication and soon the media and voices within the Bulls organization labeled Butler as an arrogant locker room cancer. So, during the offseason, Chicago traded Jimmy to Minnesota in exchange for Zach Levine, Chris Dunn, and a draft pick that later became Lowry Markkinen. Butler quickly made an impact on the court, helping the team achieve their first playoff appearance in 14 years. Averaging 22 points, 5 rebounds, and 5 assists per game, he undoubtedly proved to be an essential part of the Timberwolves' success. However, it came with its fair share of drama as well. Behind the scenes, tension brewed between Jimmy, head coach Tom Thibodeau, and the young Timberwolves core. Reports surfaced of Jimmy's frustration with his teammates' lack of willingness and commitment to winning. This culminated in an infamous practice where Jimmy challenged the entire first team, including stars Carl Anthony Towns and Andrew Wiggins, asserting his dominance on the court. As the 2018-19 season unfolded, it became clear that the relationship between Jimmy and the Timberwolves was beyond repair. 
In November 2018, the T-Wolves traded him to the Philadelphia 76ers, ending his short-lived but eventful stint in Minnesota. Butler's time with the Philadelphia 76ers was brief yet impactful. He averaged 18 points, 5 rebounds, and 4 assists per game, and his high intensity, clutch scoring, and defensive skills made him a fan favorite. The Sixers reached the Eastern Conference semifinals in the 2019 NBA playoffs, losing to the eventual champion Toronto Raptors in a thrilling seven-game series. However, Jimmy's relationship with superstar Ben Simmons was problematic, with reports of disagreements over offensive roles and leadership styles. This eventually led the team to choose between Jimmy and Simmons, and they picked their golden goose, Ben Simmons, a decision that didn't age well. Time and again, Jimmy Butler exposed the dysfunction within the organizations he played for. Although his methods of exposing these issues have been questionable, they have always been valid, yet he was the one who got traded. So, during the summer of 2019, Jimmy's tenure with the Sixers ended when he signed with the Miami Heat in a sign-and-trade deal. His arrival in Miami marked the beginning of a successful and transformative period for both Butler and the Heat organization. In his first season with the Heat, Butler made an immediate impact. His leadership, work ethic, and gritty play resonated with the team's culture, and he quickly became a fan favorite. The Heat exceeded expectations during the 2019-20 season, finishing fifth in the East. In the playoffs, Butler's performance elevated to another level as he led the team to their NBA Finals. The Heat eliminated the Indiana Pacers, the top-seeded Milwaukee Bucks, and the Boston Celtics en route to the Finals. In the championship series, Miami faced LeBron James and the Los Angeles Lakers. Despite being considered underdogs and dealing with injuries to key players, the Heat pushed the series to six games before ultimately falling short. Butler's heroic efforts, including two triple-doubles, earned him widespread recognition and respect throughout the league. He signed a four-year, $184 million contract with the Heat in 2021, and has emerged as one of the best players in franchise history. During his time with the Heat, Butler achieved numerous milestones, such as surpassing for the most 40-point playoff games in franchise history. His leadership on and off the court has driven the Heat to three straight playoff appearances, including an NBA Finals and an Eastern Conference Finals appearance. Butler's presence has undoubtedly been transformative for the Heat, establishing him as a key figure in their pursuit to the NBA title, and who knows? Maybe this is the year where everything comes full circle for the highly talented yet intense small forward. From his early struggles with homelessness, Jimmy Butler not only transformed into an NBA superstar, but he also found a loving family to share in the joy and achievements of his dreams. In an interview he did with ESPN regarding his story and upbringing, Jimmy stated this, Please, I know you're going to write something. I'm just asking you, don't write it in a way that makes people feel sorry for me. I hate that. There's nothing to feel sorry about. I love what happened to me. It made me who I am. I'm grateful for the challenges I've faced. In a lot of Jimmy's own words, it's evident that his intensity and sometimes demanding nature on the court can be attributed to the challenges he has faced throughout his life. Rather than seeking pity or sympathy, Butler draws strength from his experiences, embracing them as catalysts for his personal and professional growth. This resilient mindset has molded him into the formidable competitor he is today for better or for worse. Jimmy's tenacity and determination to succeed are both inspiring and contagious. While his demanding nature may not always be easy for his teammates or coaches to handle, and might have contributed to his being traded a few times, it ultimately cultivates a relentless pursuit of greatness. And for those who don't share or embrace this mindset, conflict with Jimmy is inevitable. It's a matter of adapt or be left behind. And if you're not convinced, just ask Ben Simmons or Carl Anthony Towns about their experiences with Jimmy Buckets. However, a player that won't be playing with or against Jimmy Butler anytime soon is former All-Star DeMarcus Cousins. He was at one time regarded as the best big man in the NBA, but is now at age 32 out of the league and playing for the Wanabo Mets in Puerto Rico's Superior National League. I made a video about Boogie's career, what went wrong, and how much money the 6'10 center has lost out on. Check it out.